want to get their hands dirty and will want to be a part of a production. It's just, it's just an awesome, awesome feeling. You almost sort of get an adrenaline rush sometimes when you do it. It's a really good feeling. I enjoy it a lot. It's kind of a one of a kind. It's not something you're going to find anywhere. You can't just go into high school and pick up a broadcasting program. We have our own TV station here. We have our own radio station. Not many schools have it, which is why it's so vital and important that we keep it here. Whatever their passion is, we try to feed it. That's my main goal is to make sure that we are getting them ready. I tell them a hundred times over. It doesn't matter really how much money you're going to make in life, but if you do not enjoy what you're doing, your, your job's going to be miserable. You have to enjoy it. I love it. This is my passion. I would be fine if I was struggling to meet my, you know, my physical needs or whatever, or my uh, economical needs, as long as I'm doing something I'm happy with. Joe's just got rock star hair, so he's <laughs> Joe's got rock star hair. Yeah, it's the only he, thing that matters. Look at yeah. his beard. Look at his beard. Rock star hair on his face and the top of his head. <laughs> yeah. And on the upper lip, nonstop. I'm gonna go do something. My marathon show is half zombie themed, so I'm doing like hardcore research for it. I'm like the West African voodoo zombies and like zombies from like Haiti and like South Africa and stuff. Cool. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna do the senior side first. They're gonna be all down like this. We're going to do a, a long shot. I initially wanted to just work kind of behind the scenes and then get some anchoring in, um, experience. But then I started working for Comcast, which is a cable company, and found my own internship. And I got really into the back behind the scenes aspect of it. Four, <laughs> three, two, go! Go, Rachel! <laughs> I teach them every aspect from pre to post production of broadcasting so that they can decide, you know, after three years they should be able to decide whether they want to be in front of the camera, behind the camera, editing, post-production. I mean, there's so many different facets of it. Well, you have it at the end. What? You have it at the end, too. I do see this program, this type of a program, bringing people together, and these are relationships and friendships that are preserved. Uh, part of that is because, you know, it's like anything else, when you do something creative and you're on a team, you're kind of in the trenches, you know? And you have a perspective on creating something that nobody else will have. Well, I definitely want to put something in here because it's just them sitting there. If you were to put music under this, you could use the pin tool to just drop it down a little bit. The Radio Marathon is here, and be sure to catch it all. On the Exile Radio, 89.1. Make sure to listen March 30th through April 1st. All day, baby. Greetings, WPHS listeners. This is the stash reminding you not to be afraid to pull out your mint condition semi hollow Gibson ES335 air guitar in fear of breaking. That's my favorite break, it. man. I because I myself will buy you a new one. So keep tuning in to 89.1 WPHS, the Exile Radio. Stash, you have a beautiful voice. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> I think one of the things that makes us unique is our ability to react to um, budget cuts. Now, every school has to do that, think on their feet, but there is such a strong community of creatives that are involved in this, and it's not just the current students. There's alumni um, and teachers and parents that are so dedicated that even as the funding has kind of gone away because we're not a core class, we've actually not only maintained our station, but our sound is actually better than it's ever been. The, the district, like as in any, any district, was cutting back on funding, and we used to be on the air with the radio station up until 8.30 every night. Our parapro Jeremy was here from 1.30 in the afternoon until 8.30 in the evening. Um, they cut one instructor. There was a radio instructor and a TV instructor, and they combined it and removed one instructor to a, the regular classroom. Right now in Michigan, we've got a, a governor that is cutting out around $400 per student um, across the board. So. The struggle is, okay, even though these programs always fill up with students, they're not core classes, right? It's not math, it's not reading, it's not science. And working in, in a visual art capacity makes kids more comfortable with 
like talking to other people, making eye contact with other people, um, addressing other people. It's it's hard for um, like teenagers or even young adults to have like to look an adult like a 50 year old CEO in the face and have a conversation. But if you looked at if you ran the camera and been in front of the camera, you get a little more used to it. You're not going to learn how to talk to people, how to talk to record companies, how to talk to people from businesses from sitting in a math class learning trigonometry. And essentially, unless you're going into something like that, regardless of what you're going to do, you could be going to be, you know, get your PhD in medicine, but you're going to be getting a part-time job while you're going to school and you're going to need to know how to talk to people to get that. So this, the things that you learn here, you're just going to take with you forever. One to the right, one to the left. this place wasn't here, I mean, I feel like the entire dynamic of the school would be off. It's like there would just be like an asteroid hit the school and there's just a big chunk of something that should be there and that used to be there and that's just not anymore.